Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates, and today I'm going to be going over how to calculate percentile rank in Excel, which is the second part of a series I have done on quartiles and percentiles. I'll link to the part one video where I covered how to take a salary range, min and max, and break it out into quartiles of the salary range. So that's what we did last week is, is breaking out a range into four different quartiles. And then we also talked about how each quartile is related to each percentile. So each percentile is split into 25%. So first quartile being zero to 25th percentile, second quartile going up to the 50th percentile or the median of a salary range, et cetera, until we get to the fourth quartile with the 100th percentile being the max of the salary range. And the different types of analysis or recommendations you can do based on where an employee's pay falls within the percentiles and quartiles. So let me go back to the template we were using, which is the sales commission calculation template. This is for sales employees that are paid a commission based on their sales. So that is another template that we have at Time Saving Templates. I'll link to the video and the template if you're interested in this one. It just has different tabs to determine what a commission percentage should be. Okay, so for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and hide some of these columns so it's not too distracting for what we are trying to calculate right now, which is the employee's percent rank. So there's two similar formulas that you might think of for this. There's percentile and then there's percent rank. So we wanna use percent rank if we already have the employee's salary and we wanna find out how does it rank against these ranges or quartiles. If we didn't have a salary and we just wanted to know what pay would I have to be to be at the 55th percentile within this range, then you would use the percentile formula. So that's kind of the difference there. So I'm gonna go ahead and you could either type it in or use the FX box up here and just type in percent and you'll see the different options. There's percentile, percent rank, and we even have quartile down here, which is what we covered last week in last week's video. So just like last time, there's gonna be a EXE, which is exclusive or a INC inclusive versions of this formula. And I explained it a little bit more in the last video, the differences, but it's still the same with this. We're gonna recommend to use the INC or the inclusive, especially when you're using salary ranges and that type of thing. So we're gonna use the percent rank inclusive. And once you select that, you see a few different options. We're gonna just fill out the first two. The second is optional. The array is going to be the salary range that we already have. So I'm just going to highlight it over here. We're assuming these employees are all in the grade A. You'll see if it was grade B, it's a different range. For X, it's going to be the employee's pay. So we're seeing the value we want to know the rank for, where this pay ranks between this range. Significance, again, this is optional leave that blank and click OK. OK, so we need to make our salary range absolute. So we need to add some dollar signs here so that it, we still reference A on each row for this. So I'm going to do function F4 and it added dollar signs to the first part. I probably should have put my cursor right there in the middle. And now we add dollar signs to that, that salary range right there. And then now when I drag it down, now it's giving us, it's referencing that same range that I want it to. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is switch this to a percentage format because we already have with the quartiles and different numbers, let's just look at this as a percentage. So this is saying percent rank, you're at the 100% because they're at the max. This person is 20% of the range. Let me just delete B so that we don't get confused with all these different options. 
So at 80,000, they're at 20% rank. So just slightly above the minimum. And then 60 at 90,000, they're just slightly above the midpoint. So a 50% rank would place them right at the midpoint. And remember, 50% is also the top of quartile two. Okay, so this calculation may look similar to another formula we did, where which was called position and range. And that is looking at the employee's pay and where it fits within the range. So if you're using position and range, which is also referred to as range penetration sometimes, this is a really almost the same, it gives you the same exact result. You could use it in the same way to determine quartiles as well. So if I go back to my, my merit worksheet template, where we talked about the percentiles and where they fall, I have this little chart right here and let me paste it over the quartile and which percentile range. And just for comparison, let's paste it right here so we can see that we can do additional formulas or additional analysis just by, by knowing the percent rank. Then we could say, you know, they're in the first quartile 20%, I'm sorry, 100% would be in the fourth quartile. Let's remove the percentage. 20% would place us in the first quartile and 60% places us in the third quartile. Okay, so now you could do a formula to get this. All you could do if formula IFS. If 100,000 is less than the top of quartile one, then give me quartile one. If this is less than the top of quartile two, give me quartile two. The same thing, if it's less than the top of quartile three, give me quartile three. And you could also put this as less than or equal to, then give me quartile four. We got an NA, I think, because if you do it this way, we need absolute references because that range, unless we're gonna copy the range down. So if you have the range in the same row, then this would work. Okay, so to include greater than or less than or equal to in this fourth quartile, I'm going to want to add the less than and equal sign to that formula. And then, um, so that's one way we could determine these quartiles, or you could also use the if formula. If you have the percent rank or you have the position in range, you can also do a formula that says if they're between zero to 25%, actually I would do the same ifs formula and say if this is less than 25%, I guess less than or equal to 25%, then give me quartile one. If L5, if L5 is less than or equal to 50%, give me quartile two. If L5 less than equal to 75%, give me quartile three. And if L5 is less than equal to 100%, give me quartile four. And then we get the same quartile result that way. So that's two different ways that you could assign a quartile based on either the percent rank formula or just looking at um, if you did last week's video and you have the quartiles calculated already, you could see where their pay falls within the range. Then also going back to the merit increase worksheet, just to show you an example of, I put in percent rank, not percentile rank, but percent rank formula here. And then I also compared it to the position and range formula and I'm getting the same result. So salary 
minus minimum divided by max minus min is the formula we had covered in a previous video. The one thing I do notice that is different between these two formulas, the one we just covered in the position and range, is I'm getting a value here if the employee's pay is over the max, then it tells me how much over. If it's under the min, then it's telling me how much under. So I'll link to that video too. That's another compensation metrics video that I have about that. But we can do different analysis once you have this information as far as assigning the percentiles, assigning the quartiles, and then based on that, you can provide different types of recommendations. For example, a higher percentage increase if they're in the first quartile, that means they're low in the range. If they're in the fourth quartile, meaning they're at the close to the max of the range. So you can target different quartiles for different experience levels or different performance ratings. So that's another way you can use this information if you're working in compensation or human resources. So I will link to both of those. Until next time, don't forget, I am here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using your Excel spreadsheets in your small business or in your HR department. And Feel free to check out our free resources we have at timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources. We have a free guide to get you started with Excel, and there's also some different options. If you work in HR or compensation, we have a compensation metrics cheat sheet that you can download, and then we also have some things for small business or rental property management. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.